At this point, we have input the mathematical model into the solver and obtain a numerical solution and have primary unknowns at selected points, that is u, v, uh, and p at the cell centers. So we can move on to post-processing and I will go into the project window and to start the post-processor, I will right click on results and say edit. And it'll say starting CFD post, which is the post processor. And after CFD post comes up, you will see a view like this. And here, what it's showing you is that the, the rectangle has been extruded a little bit in the Z direction because CFD post brings in uh, 2D objects also as 3D because it's built as a 3D post processor. And if I highlight, um, Symmetry one here, I see it's the front plane. And if I deselect that and select symmetry two, it's a back plane. So we'll plot stuff on symmetry one. And to uh, get a 2D view, I will click along Z. And if your view gets askew, just click on, on Z. Okay, um, the first thing I'd like to take a look at is velocity. Uh, and so let's plot velocity vectors. And I will go here and pick the vector icon. I will give the object an appropriate name. So I'll say velocity vectors. And for location, as I indicated, we will select symmetry one. And sampling is vertex, which means that it'll plot a velocity. It'll find the velocity at the vertices by interpolating from the cell centers and plot a vector that is proportional to the, the velocity. Uh, and it'll give you, also give you the direction. And I'll say apply. And the vectors are a little long. So what I'll do is I'll go under symbol and symbol size, I will change it to 0 0.2. And that gives me a nice view of the, the boundary layer development. And if I look at the range of velocities, it goes from zero to a little over one. And, and the reason um, it's a little greater than one, we'll get into it uh, later. And I can um, go to, I can zoom in here using the right mouse button and drawing a rectangle to get a closer view of the boundary layer development. So you can see you all have almost uniform velocity coming in and then quickly the boundary layer gets established and then it grows slowly. And if I pick pan, I can, um, you know, see the boundary layer development downstream. I'll zoom out using the middle mouse wheel. I'll say zoom to fit. Um, so that's a good view of boundary layer development. We can also look at the velocity contours, magnitude contours. And for that, I will select this icon here and I will call the object velocity mag for magnitude contours. And again, we will plot over symmetry one and we will select the variable as velocity and we'll get greedy and plot 101 contours. It just gives smoother variation to the um, the contour plot and I will say apply. I should in fact go and hide the velocity vectors here. Okay. Um, and if I zoom out, um, I can, you know, I can play with this legend. So if I double click on default legend view um, and I'm editing default legend view one, I can go into appearance and change it to fixed. I prefer this uh, in this plot and I'll say precision two. So that's a little bit more readable to me. And I can see that the, uh, I can see the boundary layer, uh, you know, development and you can see the thickness of the boundary layer is much smaller than the length of the plate as we expect. And we can also probe values of velocity. So let me zoom in 
using the right mouse button into the, um, the back end of the plate. And if I select the probe option here, I can, if I go along here, somewhere over here, the boundary layer transition into the outer flow. So let's say the boundary layer thickness is, is somewhere over here. And if I go and change the velocity there, it's around 1, which is what we expect at the edge of the boundary layer, and y is around 0.4, and we had estimated the boundary layer thickness from boundary layer theory as 0.05. So it's in the right ballpark, which is encouraging. Um, we can also check the boundary conditions on velocity. So I will zoom out by saying fit to view, and then at far field 1, I see the velocity is very close to 1, which is what I expect. Far field 2, again, is very close to 1. And then near the plate, it, is, it says it's 0, so which is what we expect. So that's a nice check on the velocity boundary conditions. And if I zoom out a little bit, get rid of the probe. I can also get rid of the ruler, which I tend to do to get nice, nice looking plots. Um, I can um, go under Edit Options, Viewer, and turn off the ruler. I'll say Apply, OK. And if I want to save this, this plot, I can go into, uh, I can select the camera icon here and the folder where it saves a little obscure, if you go up a couple of levels, you will get to your working directory and you can give it an appropriate name. Say velocity magnitude contours. I won't do that in the interest of time. And I could also use the snipping tool, which some of you might be familiar with. It's a tool in Windows. And save the project.